Next question is from Venla. Does anybody else feel guilty for being sick and slacking off? I f- I have this thing where I tend to get overexcited, uh, overexert myself. I take uh, I take on too much, and then inevitably, and then that inevitably leads me to getting sick or injured. When I'm forced to rest, or then I'm forced to rest, but I feel guilty for slacking off and not getting enough done. A good example is this week. I got the flu and had high fever on Saturday, so I was totally out of it. Uh, could barely stand for no longer than a few minutes and had muscle soreness and headache. On Sunday I was feeling heaps better but did try to take it easy to be on the safe side and to not get worse again. But today, since I'm not getting any housework done during the weekend, I'm trying to make up for lost time and trying to catch up on stuff that I haven't done. And then the cycle starts again until I get sick again. I have, um, I've been aware of this cycle for several years, but I don't seem to be able to stop myself and learn from my mistakes. Well, I have taken a little baby steps, but ultimately it still leads to the same place. I know where it'll lead, but the guilt and fear and similar or and sim- and sense of duty are just stronger. Has anybody exper- experienced some anything similar? Um, how do you deal with it? I'd appreciate any insights that you might have. Venla, thank you for asking this question. This is a this is a fantastic question for a couple of reasons. Number one, some years ago, some decades ago, probably, uh, I would have been asking the same question. I was addicted to uh, being of service, and um, I was killing myself with it. I was. Uh, the cost of being of service and, and having a sense of duty was um, injuring me, was making me sick, was making me unable to unable to manage. Now, I remember what it was for me, and I wonder if it's something similar for you. And if it's not, that's of course totally okay. But I remember when I was a child. Uh, with my parents, if I wasn't the good girl and try and anticipate my parents' moods and needs and then fulfill those, then I wasn't safe. Uh, If I wasn't effectively controlling the emotional landscape of my parents by my actions, so so being really helpful and making them happy, then I couldn't control their emotions. Then I would be at the receiving end of their anger or predict, unpredictable behavior or frustration or whatever. And I wonder if that speaks to you as well. And as grown-ups, you know, you've been aware of this this uh, cycle for quite some time but as grown-ups we must understand at some point that what that that what happened that that sense of trying to manipulate how people feel by by overexerting ourselves is actually a form of self-abuse so we must understand at some point that we are not responsible for other people's emotions or emotional reactions, nor do we have to be afraid of their reactions. We might have a knee-jerk reaction to be afraid, but we can actually train ourselves out of that too. Just doing the inner parenting, showing our inner children that they are safe, even in situations of contrast and, and and disregard or anger from even from other people, we must allow other people own their own emotions so that we can own ours and ours alone. You see, when we take responsibility for something that we have no control over, we live in an unsustainable model. And other people's emotions are something we can't control. 
So my question to you is, what does it mean to you about you if somebody is angry in your vicinity? So somebody gets angry and you take responsibility of that. What does that... I, I, I encourage you to, the next time this happens, to write down the actual thoughts that are in your head about how unsafe it is, how, you know, how you're feeling, you know, are you getting fight, a flight, freeze, fawn, um, reaction. Write down everything about it. So let's take a more observatory, investigative approach to this challenge that's been plaguing you for quite some time. So I'd love to hear from you if that was helpful. I know understanding something and executing it are two entirely different things. But oftentimes our execution stems from our understanding of something. So we become aware of something different and then we do something different as a result. So I'd like to hear from you when you have had your next kind of triggering space where you feel like you're lazy or slagging, slagging off, slacking off. Um, who are you afraid of? Who's going to have an emotional reaction to it? And what do you think or what do you feel it means about you? Whether it does or doesn't actually mean those things about you, that's not really the point yet. We're not at that stage yet. But I'd love to hear what is it that you believe that it says about you. So please let me know. I'd love to hear that. Basically, personally, how I dealt with it was separating other people's emotions, emotional responsibility from myself, and then just learn to stay in the discomfort of rejecting other people's emotional reactions when, in fact, I was so used to always just accepting them and trying to soothe them. That's how I got over it. <laughs> <laughs> 